Hello, uh, people have been asking me to do a full character rig on Toon Squid. Uh, full color and line art and all that stuff. I'll be using the vector path pin in the bottom left corner. Uh, I will be using that for every piece of limb in the body and the, the head and all that stuff. I'm not going to be talking through the whole video. Uh, this is mostly just a follow along. Some spots are going to be sped up, uh, but before that, I will explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it uh, the best I can. And just a reminder for whatever character you're going to draw for this character, it's Morty. So I have multiple pieces of the body and I'm going to have them all on separate layers. The legs, shoes, hips, torso, the arms, the hands, the head hair, eyeballs, pupil, the nose, the mouth, and the ears are all going to be on separate layers. I'm going to be doing this in drawing layers. I'm not using a animation layer. I'm only using these drawing layers. You can, however, use the animation tracks if you want to. Easier for like symbols and all that stuff. We have an arm here, I have the sleeve, the arm itself, the hand, all on separate layers. So to make it easier for me, I'm going to create a group, name it left arm, main, and then I'm going to select each piece of the arm by sliding the layer to the right, and then I'm going to press and hold on the top layer and drag and drop into the group. So now it's in that group layer and it's organized. It also should already be in a grouped layer when you first started drawing. If it's not, you'll just do the same thing to the grouped layer for the arm. You would just press and hold on the layer, drag it up to your character layer at the very, very top and drop it in there. For this next part, I copied and pasted the left arm and then flipped it uh, and made it the right arm. Uh, so it's in its own group. It's a separate group from the other arm. It's not in the same group. It's its own group layer. It has its own layers in it, okay? Just like the one arm. And you gotta make sure that the arm is behind the torso so it doesn't overlap all the other layers. Next I'm going to select the shirt layer and lower the opacity so I can easily see behind it and then I'm gonna hide the arms so I can draw the hips or pelvic area. This will also be on its own layer away from everything else but it will still be in the character group. I'm going to be drawing the uh, legs now. Uh, when you're using the vector path pen, uh, you gotta make sure that you're paying attention to where you're adding the joints, the dots that you see on the lines when I'm drawing, uh, because that's where your line art and stuff is going to bend when you add the bones. All right, next, uh, real quick, we're just going to be doing the uh, eyeballs, the pupil uh, for each eye, the nose and mouth, and the ear. Um, in this case, the eyeballs are going to be on their own layer by themselves inside the R character group, so it's still with it. Then our Nose and mouth and ear, in this case, are going to be on its own layer as well. And then the pupils are going to be on their own layer. Even though they're two separate eyeballs, the pupils are going to be on their own layer as well. All right. I'm going to have each eyeball also on the same layer. I 
after you're done drawing your face and all that stuff, including the hair, uh, in this case, uh, you don't always want to do this, but for this case, we have everything. We're going to make a new group called Head Main, and we're going to do exactly what we did with the other limbs. We're going to select all the layers that we need to put in the grouped layer. We're going to press and hold and drag and drop into the group layer. Just another reminder to make sure that it's still inside the character grouped layer so everything is still bundled together. For this next part, if you see the line where the armpit is on the torso, we're going to be trying to get rid of that line by opening the path of my vector path pin uh, and it should get rid of the line that it's currently on uh, so you can see that it's not connected to the head up there, it's just the armpit and it ends there. We're going to do the same thing to this uh, pelvic area right here. We just click one of the dots, choose whichever one that you need, all right, and then you click open path and it should get rid of the line. If it's not the right line, try a different dot or add a dot and then open path on that dot. You got to make sure it's selected so it would open the right line. One more last thing before we start adding the bones, uh, I'm going to go to the pupils and I'm going to select the layer and then I'm going to press it again to open up the menu to select toggle mask so it toggles to the eyeballs so when we move the pupils around they're not going to fall off of the eyeball, they're just going to stay on top of the eyeball layer. So finally, now we're going to start adding the bones. We do that by making sure that we are selecting the character grouped layer. We click effect, we go to bones, and we make sure that we have the add bones button selected. And we got to make sure that we do it in the right order, right? So here I start at the pelvic area and work my way up the torso to the head you got to make sure that the last bone that you just drew is selected when you're drawing a bone so they're connected to each other so they're not just floating around. So now that I'm drawing the legs, I make sure that I select the pelvic bone or the hips, the hip bone. Then I can start drawing the legs so they are connected to the hips. You want to make sure that you draw one leg at a time so they're connected to each other, not both legs as one leg, one separate leg each. The foot is also included in this leg. When you go to do the other leg, make sure that you also go back and click on the hips, the pelvic bone, to draw the other leg. So that leg is connected to the hips and not the other leg. Now we're going to go up and draw the bones for the arms. So we need to do is select the upper chest bone that we have and then start drawing the arms. We do one arm each just like we did the legs. So we draw the left arm here and then when we go to draw the right arm we select the chest bone again and draw the other arm. So the arms are connected to the chest not to each other. I'm also, <clears throat> I'm also going to be drawing a bone for the pupils so we can drag that bone around so we can move the pupils around on the eye. Next we have to attach the bones to the body so we do that by clicking the bone and clicking edit bone binding and we in this case select the pupils so we can move the bone around and the pupils will move around the eyeball when we drag it around. We're just going to go throughout the body and attach the bone to each body part. Um, so the bone that's on the head, you double tap the bone and you click edit bone binding and then you select what you want to be attached to that bone. In this case, I'm just doing just the head, the circled skin that I drew in the beginning. All right? And then I do it again, the same exact thing I just did. I do it again, I double tap the bone, edit bone binding and I select the next thing I want. So this case, it's the nose and mouth and ear, and then I do it again. I do the eyeballs, 
And then the next thing I do is the hair. I do not attach the pupils because the pupils are attached to the eyeballs and then the eyeballs are attached to the head, if that makes any sense. Now that we have everything attached, uh, when we move the bone for the head, everything should move with the head, everything. Uh, eyeballs, the pupils, the ear, the nose, the mouth, the hair, the head, all of it should rotate with it. If not, then you've bound it wrong, try again. So this next part, I'm just gonna go through and bind the bones to each body part. The chest and pelvic area get bound together. Chest is the torso, the pelvic is the hips and the torso. This isn't always the case, depending on the character, the hips and the torso might be completely different binding and a different bone and all this stuff and everything. But in this case, I'm binding the pelvic bone to the hips and the torso. So I'm just gonna quickly go through and bind every bone to each body part. Right here, I messed up. Uh, I didn't bind the upper bone to the arm. Uh, that bone, that's upper part of the arm is connected to the sleeve. So what I'm just gonna do real quick is bind the upper bone of the arm to the actual arm itself. So when I bend the arm, it stays there and it's not doing a weird rotation thing. So it might look a bit funky, it might warp a little bit, but at least it's sticking together. That's what we're looking for. This next part is going to be hard to understand, but just follow along as I say it. Select the upper arm bone, right? And then draw a bone on the edge of the body part, like we're doing here, like we're showing. Then select the upper bone on the arm again and draw another bone in the armpit on the edge of our body part again. Then next we select the arm bone again and then we draw another bone on one side of the arm and then select the arm bone again and then draw another bone on the other side of that bone. And we're going to do the exact same thing to the bottom part of the arm. Select the bottom bone for the arm and draw a bone on the right side and then select the bone and then draw it on the left side and just keep doing that for each arm. Both arms do the same thing. So when you go to the other arm, you're gonna do it again. Make sure you also bind these bones to the arms as well. So we're just gonna do the same thing that we did for the arms, but for the legs. So make sure you select the upper leg for the bone draw the bone on the left side, select the bone again, and draw the bone on the right side. And then we go to the lower leg. We do the same exact thing. And then after we're done with doing all that stuff, we gotta make sure that we bind those bones to the leg. i show you the reason why we're adding these extra bones. So when you go to rotate, you can see it's not connected to the hips, but now, we can drag those extra bones on the edges that we made and move the line over so now it looks like it's connected to the body. So when we go to animate, everything is gonna stick this way and be nice and smooth and all that stuff. We can rotate it, drag it, and pull it around, all that stuff. Uh, this is the best way I figured out how to do it uh, since Toon Squid does not have smart bones or anything like that like other programs. If you're not liking the way that something is bending or moving, you could just add more bones to the lines. Like I'm doing here, I make sure that I select the bone leg that's on the lower leg, because I don't like the way that the pant leg is bending. So I'm gonna add bones so I can control that when I can. So now when I go to bend the leg, I can move the pant leg down and all that stuff. Uh, if it's not moving, like in this case, you can go to the properties of the bone and increase the strength of the bone so it will move uh, better. And by the end of all of this, that you should have a well-working 
rigged cartoon character. Uh, you would animate them by using keyframes in the, the animation tracks. Um, I don't have a end result for this because I'm terrible at keyframing. Uh, but if something is not bending right, like the hips are not connecting or something like that, like what's happening here, just add more bones to the shirt uh, so you can move the shirt around or maybe add bones to the hips so you can like shrink and stretch the hips and stuff like that. I'm just gonna let it play out so you can see how things move. If you can, please uh, subscribe to my channel, like the video. I have a Patreon that I post early access to stuff and extra stuff like that. I also have a coffee. You can commission me for art on my coffee or you can simply just donate to me if you want to support the channel. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of the video.